you know it's gonna be a good day when we get to drive another Mazda. Today we're looking at the Mazda RT24P, which actually stands for the Road to 24 prototype hinting at the 24 hours of Daytona. Now, if you're like me and you have no idea what a DPI is and how it compares to, say, a Le Mans prototype, DPIs are built on the same chassis as a LMP2 car. So the performance between an LMP2 and a DPI are fairly similar. This car in particular is built on the Riley Multimatic Mark 30 LMP2 chassis. I'm reading off my phone because I can't remember that because I'm a little blonde. When I was looking up information on this car to do the whole intro bit that we're doing right now. The thing that shocked me the most is that this car uses a two liter turbocharged inline four. I thought that was really tiny. Now the reason I want to take a look at this car today is because it won the Daytona race that took place last weekend on July 4th and it's going to be competing in about a week or two at Sebring. So today we're going to do just that. We're going to take it around Sebring, 20 other DPI cars for five laps, I don't know the track very well, so I don't know how well this is going to go, but, uh, yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> so we're starting right at the back. 21 other guys. I totally messed that up. That started going green way before I expected it to. We're kind of all alone here, flying into turn one. Okay. Okay. Well, we're almost, almost fighting for top 10 right off the bat. <laughs> that wasn't part of the plan. Okay, right away, the one thing that glares out to me as being the most beautiful thing on this entire planet is this engine noise. This turbocharged four cylinder, man, it, it sings. Especially on that pit wall. Dude, it's like an echoing chamber of ecstasy is what it is, man. I don't know where to break for this corner. See that guy on my inside, I want to leave him a little bit of space. But as I said earlier in the video, I don't know this track too well. I know it a little bit, but not, not too well, so I'm kind of learning as I go here. There's so much grip in this car. The tires are still cold. They're just starting to warm up now. Like there, there's so much grip. You can just yeet it into the corner. I messed up my line for that last one, but... It's just so drivable. I guess that's the, that's the best way to describe it. It's just drivable. There's some GT cars that you gotta kinda, kinda baby around, you know? The Porsche comes to mind. You know, we gotta watch out for that back end. I don't know if I'm just not on the limit or, or what. It's just planted, man. It's on rails. This track is also extremely bumpy, which I am... <laughs> now... realizing. My wheel doesn't do a very good job at conveying the bumps. It actually... conveyed zero bumps. The yeah, I go defensive there. This is some smart AI. You know, I've heard good things about R Factor 2's AI, and this is my first actual experience with them. I'm interested to see how they behave side by side. Hey, they didn't kill me, so that's nice. <laughs> This thing just, it just does what you want it to. The only thing that's a little, you gotta be a little careful with is the brakes. You don't wanna lock up into every single corner and it is pretty easy to do so. But uh, that's, that's really my only thing that I'm worrying about while driving this thing. I'm trying to find a way around this guy right now. This field is comprised of a couple LMP2 cars. Oh, as we just go up the inside. As a few LMP2 cars, the uh, the Orca team, or the Orca brand, I guess. Uh, there's other DPI cars, there's Acura, I believe there's a few Cadillacs up here. 
or in here, I should say. Oh, my bad, dude. He was going very slow, and I couldn't stop because of that horrendously bumpy <laughs> last corner. Alright, let's see if we can get the braking zone right for this. We're gonna break right about now. Just before the ending of that pit lane, and I think we need to break a little earlier, because we gotta be right up next to that wall. Oh, I missed the braking zone for that, though. He just ripped down the gears. The thing that's making me most impressed right now isn't the engine sound, it's not the, the R-Factor 2 AI, it's the quality of this car, hello, as I, again, lock up. That's gonna be a common occurrence today, I think. This car is a third-party mod that you can find on the Steam Workshop, along with the other DPI cars. Again, I, <laughs> I don't know the track, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, along with the other DPI cars, like the 2019-2020 the DPI cars, you can find the Acura, you can find the Cadillac, you can find the Mazda, obviously. I don't know if there's any other ones. Oh, getting a little bit of understeer now. Granted, that could be due to setup, because I'm just running the default setup the game gives you. Alright, we gotta be careful here. We know the AI are quite slow through the last corner. The gearing between 5th and 6th seems very short. The save, dude! <laughs> I didn't mean to hit- I, I, I even went slow, man. I even went slower than before. Tried to- Tried to be more cautious. Oh, he's still there? Okay, we might have moved done. That was a dive that I wasn't expecting to make. This is a very fun circuit, though. On the back of a... something or other. Defensive, okay. I'm not used to that level of intelligence from. Okay, that was a cheeky round the outside. <laughs> I'm not used to that level of intelligence from AI and Sims. We're already in the top 10, fellas. Um, we're gonna pretend that didn't happen. I right, remember when I said we were top 10 already. I lied. It was funny, that was the same exact corner from the, <laughs> the previous lap as well, though. We just totally binned. These two left-handers into the slow right-hand. Oh, I got on the grass. That's going to understeer me. Or make me understeer? Understeer me. That sounds weird and oddly ironic as we go wide. Yeah, we're getting a lot of understeer now. I think that's because our tires are... Uh, you can't see, you can see my bottom left tire underneath my camera, uh, but my, my front left was 90 degrees coming down that straight as we go a little wide. Oh, dude, the sound of the engine bouncing off the walls. So good. One lap to go. Already the last lap. Break now. Yeah, I'm just I'm just not really getting the turn in, so I think have the tire wear is coming into play already for some reason in a five lap race. I mean I'm probably flat spotting the hell out of these tires locking up that much. Or uh I'm not quite getting the max out of this car, which is most likely the case because I've only had four laps with it. For goodness me, it's it's beautiful. Yeah, it... Brakes are very touchy. That's just me, but they are touchy. <laughs> that, that's me making errors, but it, they are touchy. 
is a very fast part of the circuit. You gotta be careful. This is where we spun every single time the last two laps. A word on the grass, I should say. We didn't that time, however. In second gear, we're not gonna touch first. Although first might have helped to keep in the uh, in the power band range for that delicious turbo aiding the four cylinders. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I, I might be, I, I must be overdriving it because I, that the car felt beautiful through there. Trying to get back up to the back of 14th. So bumpy. You kind of have to go wide to avoid that massive ditch in the middle of the, of the track. That's what I would call it. Oh, that's the end of the race. I thought we had. I, I, I was hoping we had another 20 laps to go. Well, fellas, that was the Mazda RT24P as I take a very wide excursion and do the landscaper's job for him a little bit. This car is a blast to drive, and I'm really, really excited to see it go around Sebring now that I've driven it around Sebring. I hope they can make it a second win in a row. That'd be, uh, that'd be pretty keen. Can you tell I'm a Mazda fanboy, by the way? Anyways, I'm gonna wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed the video. I do hope to see you again next time. And until then, take care. Stay safe out there. Later.